The Poco F6 have always been called the flagship killer for the past few years. This year, the Poco F6 comes with a Snapdragon 8S Gen 3, Crystal Res 120Hz Flow AMOLED display, 90W turbo charging, LPDDR 5X RAM, and UFS 4.0 storage. Is this enough to be the flagship killer of 2024? Let's unbox to find out! So, again, put on my unboxing gloves and let's go. So, the Poco F series usually comes with black and yellow box like this, very sleek with your favorite google apps google is trademark on google so wow this is nice uh, they actually write google here so maybe they have some kind of partnership with google all right yellow box my favorite color of course uh okay sim ejector nothing special all right okay so as like other mid ranges, usually they come with a silicone case so this is a soft one whoosh, whoosh. and it's a matte feel with the POCO logo shiny here and the word designed by POCO right so yeah looks okay manuals and yeah so put this aside let's check out the phone okay so here it writes flagship snapdragon 8s gen 3 Crystal Rest 120Hz Flow AMOLED Display 90W Turbo Charging and 50 megapixel camera with OIS So this is the phone, wow Oh the colour is nice guys, let's peel this off first Alright Okay 50 megapixel OIS is written here and other stuff here Oh the titanium colour is really really good guys It's pretty Okay, let's set this aside first Ah, okay So as usual, POCO series come with cable Okay, standard Type-C cable And a charger Wow, so this time around they give us a 90 watt brick Very clean Have some weight to it Too bad it's 2 pin Malaysians prefer 3 pins, right? More is always better but very happy the POCO still comes with 90 watt charges Okay, let's set this aside Okay guys, so the POCO F6 has jumped onto the 2024 titanium bandwagon as well Sporting this very clean titanium look So if you put a 15 Pro Max titanium colour side by side, right? You can see the difference where the 15 Pro Max is a glass matte back While this is plastic, a little bit glossy but it's matte actually So actually, I would prefer the POCO F6 colour compared to the uh, iPhone 15 Pro Max Alright, so if you see the sides, the POCO F6 is actually thinner than the 15 Pro Max Okay, buttons, very clicky Top down, yeah slimmer slim so the poco f6 is actually a little bit rounded at the edge which makes it more comfortable to hold in the hand compared to the iphone because the iphone is considered sharp even though they really improved the edges this year but this one is definitely more comfortable to hold right so the camera lens here is really pretty because it's a little bit shiny and it makes it stand out and look a bit more premium compared to the old models very very nice the phone bag is plastic so as the sides hence a much lighter weight phone but it is also more durable since there is no glass bag okay so let's check out the weight the poco f6 is just 182 grams okay compared to the 15 pro max which is 235 grams so that is easily like 40 plus grams almost 50 grams yeah 50 grams lighter weight so huge difference because uh, let's say you like to play long periods of gaming so a lighter phone is actually a more comfortable phone to hold for long periods of time overall it feels sturdy and durable and it is actually ip64 rating so you can withstand dust and some rainy day 
The Poco F6 comes with a 6.67 inch 120Hz crystal flow AMOLED display with Gorilla glass speakers. The screen is 120 x 2710 pixels which comes about 446 ppi and at 89.8 screen to body ratio. So it is not as bezel-less like the GT20 Pro which is at 91%. HDR10 Plus video and Dolby Visions are supported and the brightness of this guy can actually go up to 2400 nits. Crazy. The Poco F6 comes with dual stereo speakers and supports Dolby Atmos. So let's try it out. I have a 15 Pro Max here to do just a comparison so that at least you know versus the flagship how does it sound like, okay? So this is max up volume. Okay, so you guys let me know in the comments which one sounds better. Charging speeds are usually quite fast for Poco phones, so this year is the same. It comes with 5000 mAh power battery and it supports up to 90 watts fast charging. So it takes about 15 minutes to have a half charge, like 50% of the phone battery, and it takes slightly more than half an hour to charge full. So that's fast for today's standards. So it looks like this when you plug in their original 90 watt charger, it's written 90 watts there. If you plug in into the normal charger, you will just get this without quick charge without 90 watts written there all right so unfortunately this phone doesn't support any wireless charging but well we do get fast charge right guys Whee! the poco f6 comes with a dual camera setup main camera is 50 megapixels ois the secondary camera is an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera. All right, so I have shot some sample photos for you guys and also videos right after my unboxing. So please have a look and enjoy. This is the Poco F6 front camera. I'm walking around at the network Setia Alam. There's a bit of wind and there is a fountain behind me. This is the back camera at 4K 60fps using the internal mics let me know what you guys think I'm walking around okay I'll stop and let's see how it looks like front camera video mode at 1080p 60 FPS. Let me know what you guys think. <laughs> yeah, but one problem about the Poco is so laggy. Wait. What happened? The Poco F series have always been about performance. Housing a Snapdragon 8S Gen 3 meaning that this bad boy can pack quite a punch. Apps open and close with a breeze. The LPDDR5X RAM and UFS 4.0 storage further boost the overall speed and fluidity of the phone. According to Poco, the F6 has a 27% boost in CPU and 40% in GPU performance versus the previous model. Okay guys, so now is the best part of the show, which is gaming! Let's give it a try. The Poco F6 comes with Wow Boost Optimization 3.0 which supposedly enhances performance and graphics. Super resolution rendering but only for Genshin Impact, smart performance scheduling, better energy efficiency, and instant game control which equals to faster accurate game control with AI technology. 
So guys, not to forget the phone comes with liquid cool technology 4.0 with ice loop system which is extra large stainless steel circulating cooling pump with a surface area of 4800mm square. Well, all those are just specs on paper, right guys? We need to get into the real world test right now. So the first game we shall test here would be PUBG Mobile, alright? Graphics here, I set the higher settings, HDI and Extreme. So actually there's this gaming mode, right, for Poco. And you can see the FPS counter here. And you can actually tap into this and you get this AI. And turn on the improved device but your device will heat up. Enhanced visuals you can actually play around if you like super saturated. Additional settings you can even tap in and save power, balance, high quality, default. So touch controls you can even do pro mode. Wow. So uh, down here you still have more. Display you can select and extreme for wow. original uh, yeah so usually for this kind of settings i just like to keep it original okay so i'll bump up the volume and you guys enjoy So very smooth of course, as you can see, I'm almost dead. Ah! Oh, okay. So overall, I would say you can see the... It's under 79.58 FPS. I think it's hovering between 50 to 80, alright, which is quite good. I don't think this phone will get the 120 FPS in the next upgrade. The GT24, yes, but not this. We shall wait and see, alright. But as long as it's above 60, I think it's amazing. Ooh. Because I'm using highest graphic guys, not the low graphics and ultra smooth settings. Oh. Okay guys, so let's go move on to the next game. Okay, next game I think we will test the Genshin Impact. So this one comes with super resolution rendering, which supposedly support Genshin Impact only. Let's see how the graphics are. Alright, let's check the graphics. I have I have turned on the highest graphics. Yeah man. Highest and 60 FPS. Basically I maxed out the whole thing. Let's see what happens. Alright. Let's go for bed guys. How's the FPS doing? 85, 58, 60. Okay, so I think we are getting like what what's written in the settings where 60 FPS. Oh no, I cannot kill this bad boy. This boss is scary. Oh no, we need to look for somebody not so scary. <laughs> okay guys, so I have the highest settings here. See? And uh, 60 FPS. Alright. Maxed out. Let's see if this phone can support these settings. But guys, do follow us because we will be doing an in-depth gaming review for all the phones that we unbox, alright? So... Steady as stone. A little bit choppy, I would say, oops, compared to the GT20 Pro. But the speakers are loud, man, guys. Very loud. Now, you see, just now when I changed the character, right, it took a bit of time. I'm not sure why. Overall, I would say it's a pleasant experience to play Kenshin Impact. Let's just check out the graphics, man, guys. The speaker is good, the graphic is good. It is not as smooth as the Infinix GT20 Pro, but overall, I would say much better than last year's performance. I remember last year, all the mid-range phones, right? They still couldn't play Kenshin Impact at max graphics settings and FPS. So this year, it's so much better. So if any one of you want to play together with me when I do the review, please let me know. Comment in the comments below. We can always play together, right? When I do the reviews. Ah, let's go. Oh, okay. Um, settings-wise, graphics. 
I have on very high graphic quality and max out the frame rate. Unfortunately, I cannot set ultra, it will bump it to the low graphics. Very smooth. Let's see. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't support that in-game FPS settings like the other games though. Too bad. But definitely more than 60 FPS guys. I think it's 120. Super smooth. Very smooth, no lags at all. Very optimized. Yeah, no problems at all playing COD Mobile. So guys, I guess this phone have no issues playing Call of Duty. Right? Very smooth. The speakers are amazing for all these games, to be honest. Can be super loud, like this. Last but not least, Watering Waves. This seems like a very hot game now, so let's try it. I think it's quite graphic intensive, similar to Genshin Impact, and it should be able to handle without issues. So you see now we are loading, but it's at 120 FPS, maybe because the screen is black. Yeah, like, okay. Yeah, it's dropping a bit. Okay, so what settings do we have here? Graphic quality. Advanced high, resolution high, 60 FPS. So I've maxed out everything. Even shadow quality is high. Uh, the rest I'll just keep it as default. Okay. So this is this game is something like Genshin Impact. If you played before Genshin Impact, you will definitely recognize this game. Ooh, lagging, lagging, lagging. Ha ha ha. So graphic wise. I don't know why, but it's a little bit blurry. It's not as clear, as sharp, as crisp as the uh, Genshin Impact, right? But you see, I'm in the town, running around. There are people here, architecture, but it still looks quite smooth. Oh. There's still some distance to the Huashu Academy. You see, 120 FPS. Wow, not bad. The Oh, that's cool. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, so compared to the Genshin Impact, right? This one, the battle is so much better. Oh my god. Oh. 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 oh my god. Wow. I'm amazed, man, guys. <laughs> oh, this is nice. Very satisfying. Oh, ultimate. Come on. Oh. Nice. Okay, so. Even after playing for like 20 minutes, I'm still getting 113 FPS. Oh my god, guys. Not bad at all. You see, I'm in a fight scene, but I'm getting... It drops to 48, yes, but still, it jumps back to 100 FPS straight away. So, really good, guys. So, the Poco F6 is one of the top competitors in the budget flagship range all right guys the performance is good the cameras are not too bad and the battery life is amazing so who would i suggest to buy this phone so if you are a person like me who likes a minimalist design with a titanium look that looks alike like the iphone 15 pro max and you like curved back which is very very comfortable to hold unlike some of the boxy phones where it gets a bit uncomfortable when you game for a long duration of time and if you are looking for a budget gaming device that can handle most of the top graphic intensive games, yes, this is the phone for you. But if you are a person who loves to take photos, videos all the time, you use the camera a lot, I would say maybe this phone is not suitable for you now because the camera gets super laggy when the phone heats up. So after some time of um, short videography, the phone tends to heat up and it lags. It lags really really bad until very frustrating and your videos get very laggy. And of course, if you are a person who loves curved screen 
phones even in 2024 which is actually not a thing already then this one is not for you because it's a flat screen so guys this wraps up my poco f6 video for the day if you would like to know its gaming performance check out my previous video that i have did which is a gaming performance video of the Infinix GD20 Pro versus the Poco F6. Alright, i see you on the next one. Bye-bye!